let's have a look on how to create these uh, sounds. Um, for this, I'm going to use Ableton's operator. And I'm just going to turn down the release time of this one. So we have something like this. And for that, we are going to uh, use the fixed mode on this synth, right? So now, we, no matter which key I'm playing, it's always going to play 100 hertz. And then we're going to use the multiply over here, which is going to multiply the frequency. So 100 hertz is actually going to play at 1000 hertz, which is 1 kilohertz. But the same principle still applies that no matter which key I'm playing, it's always going to play 1000 hertz. Anyway, um, so what we heard in the sound before was some kind of FM tones and like these bird type sounds, I guess, you can call it. And to achieve those, we need some LFOs for this. As a matter of fact, we need four of them. So I'm just going to duplicate it across like this. I'm going to set the first one, leave it at a sine wave. And I'm going to map it to the frequency of our oscillator. Just going to turn off the filter as well. So the LFO is modulating the frequency of the oscillator. Nothing special. And... The second LFO, I'm going to change the waveform to glider, so we get a sample and glide function like this. So this is new for the LFO in Ableton Live 12. And I'm going to map that to the rate of our first LFO over here. So you can hear that it's oscillating quite fast, but it's not enough. We need it in audio rate mode, so we can just multiply it by 10 over here. So if I play one, um, like over here, 100 hertz, for example, it's going to be 1000 hertz, just as we did over here. So you can see, see it play like this. So now it's going to sound something like this. And the third LFO is going to modulate the depth over here of our first LFO. And I'm going to set this to unipolar by pressing the button over here. I'm just going to turn down the amount a little bit, and I'm going to turn down the depth a little bit. And I'm going to set this one to uh, random, so we get a stepped sample and hold like this. And lastly, we're going to use the fourth LFO, set it to stray, which is some kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but this is how it looks like. Some kind of, I don't know, Perlin noise or something. And I'm going to map that to the offset of our first LFO over here. So I'm going to... So now we're very close to what we had in the beginning, right? And just looking at this LFO is quite mesmerizing in itself. Um, but anyway, what more we can do is we could actually have a play with the different waveforms. So if we have, for example, a saw wave. It sounds different. And what I like to do is, if I go into the user mode over here, I can add my own harmonics to the sine wave. And if I add all of them, 
we get some kind of weird shape. Another thing that's fun to do as well is to maybe record live what you're actually doing, like the amount of harmonics you're drawing in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record it from channel 14 over here. So by doing that, since you can't modulate this with a, like you can't automate the amount of harmonics, you have to like go back into your actual sound recording and cherry pick the best parts that you like. Um, so let's just leave it at that. Let's just add some harmonics over here. So that's one important thing. What is the carrier waveform? Uh, this is called the carrier that is being audible. So to speak. Another important thing is also the waveform that is actually modulating the carrier. So, for example, if we choose a ramp up shape, we get a different type of sound to it, right? So, let's try the down. What's also important is if it's unipolar or bipolar in the modulation. So now we barely get any low end to our sound while, while we're modulating bipolar. We get a little more low end, a more beefed up sound, so to speak. Um, and another cool thing is if you choose the up, for example, and then you add some steps to your modulation, you're going to quantize the modulation shape. So if I in, 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 in lowers the steps over here, for example, eight of them. You get like these arcade sounds. So let's just dial down the depth of the rate over here. Which is kind of cool if you want to make like these game Game Boy arcade uh, arcade sounds like from Super Nintendo or something. I don't know. <laughs> Same goes if you go for the, like sound the wave. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. So yeah, that's everything I want to show you guys for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video and that it sparked some inspiration as usual. So see you in the next one.